A city under attack. Protests turned to riots after the funeral of Freddie Gray, the man who died from spinal cord injuries after he was taken into police custody. An army of police takes to the streets of Baltimore to enforce calm, but they are assaulted by rioters with rocks and bottles. At least 15 police officers have been injured, stores looted and burned. Two dozen rioters arrested. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan has declared a state of emergency and activated the National Guard. We have live team coverage, and we begin right now with Brad Bell, who's live from Endowment Mall. Actually, Kevin Lewis joining us from Baltimore County. Hi there, Kelly. Governor Larry Hogan arrived here at the Maryland Emergency Operations Center around 8 o'clock this evening. He was rushed through those doors and into a situation room where he met with some of his chief advisors, met with the state police colonel, and also leaders from the National Guard. Governor Hogan then walked into the main operations room where he spoke with us at a press conference. In his words, the governor very pointedly said he will not tolerate a bunch of thugs causing chaos in the city of Baltimore. At this hour, at least 1,500 uniformed police officers are out on the streets of Baltimore. However, by signing that state of emergency today, the governor has requested 10,000 additional law enforcement officers to guard this city. Of that 10,000, 5,000 will be from across the Mid-Atlantic region, and another 5,000 will come for the Maryland National Guard. I asked Governor Hogan what was the most difficult thing he witnessed by watching television news today. This was his response. When the law enforcement officers were hurt and injured, when police cars were on fire, uh, when uh, buildings were being set ablaze, it was, uh, it was very disturbing, and uh, you know, we called everybody together in advance of the city uh, requesting, so we were fully ready to engage. Now, it is worth pointing out that by a matter of protocol here in the state of Maryland, the mayor of Baltimore actually has to call the governor and request that a state of emergency be declared. Governor Hogan today all but said he wished Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake had called him earlier. That call, according to Governor Hogan's staff members, came at 6.30 this evening. I am told that the governor had the executive order in hand and signed on the dotted line within 30 seconds of hanging up with the governor of Baltimore. Again, Larry Hogan all but said the, the mayor of Baltimore should have made that call earlier. That is the very latest in Baltimore County. I'm Kevin Lewis, News Channel 8. All right, Kevin, thanks so much. And Brad Bell was also in Baltimore today monitoring the events going on with the protests and then the riots. And he's standing by live right now outside Mondawmin Mall. Brad? Yeah, we first came to Baltimore today for the funeral of Freddie Gray. There were pleas for peace and quiet there. They were not obeyed. Bay. Now, this is Mondawmin Mall. This was the original target of the protesters, if you can call them that today. Police turned their back, and looters came here this evening. It's been quite a scene. It begins at 3, just as high school lets out. Young people who've been threatening a purge on social media head to Mondawmin Mall. Police, who'd been tipped off, were there in force. Having been just blocks away covering the funeral of Freddie Gray, we arrive on scene quickly and we see the violence as we report live. Here we go. Watch this man in the blue hoodie. Watch him. So he just threw a full he just threw a full paint can. Hundreds of police hold their ground as they are pelted with rocks and chunks of concrete. Fifteen officers are injured. The situation grows more violent. Cars are set on fire. Rioters ignore pleas from their own neighbors to stop. And we need to sit down and talk about this. I don't know why, but it's happening. We want justice, okay? There was a very loud bang. I couldn't see what it was. It could have been a brick on one of the plastic shields. Here's a police officer here. Oh, it was tear gas, pepper spray. Here's a police officer right here choking and gagging. Eventually, the rock throwers head elsewhere, and police go to try to head them off. That leaves the original target of Mondawm and Mall unprotected, and hundreds of looters sweep in. Police race back to the scene. These people are caught red-handed. It's a long night for the town. This police officer shows his damage done to his car. He is shaken. Didn't know where to go, but I go to church. Well, back live now. You can see up on the balcony, Mondawmin Mall. Those are police officers standing up there, keeping guard now. It is impossible to overstate just what a chaotic scene it was here. 
this evening. Hundreds of people literally coming to this mall, ransacking the store. We, stores. We've not been allowed back in, but police tell us that this place is wrecked. We were not immune. More than once today, we had rocks thrown at us. We had car windshield shattered as well. A lot of anger in Baltimore. Back to you. All right, Brad, thank you very much. And several Baltimore businesses are in shambles tonight. Rioters attacked stores at random, breaking windows as well as looting. These are some aerials of a liquor store in Baltimore that was attacked. Jay Korf continues our live team coverage in Baltimore right now. Jay? Well, just to give you a sense as to where we are in northwest Baltimore, uh, there are literally hundreds of men and women in police riot gear who have surrounded, they've cordoned off an area, if you will, a several block area around North Avenue and Pennsylvania, where that's one of the sections about a block away, a block and a half away from where I'm standing is one of the ground zeros, if you will, where there was a CVS that was looted and burned. There was a check cashing place that was looted. Uh, two law enforcement vehicles were um, burned and there's still chaos. This is still an active scene. This area is being cordoned off. It has been a wild, wild and dangerous day in Baltimore. It's horrifying. It's horrifying. But I know that it could have been avoided. Sections of Baltimore spun out of control one day. Police defended parts of the city in riot gear, while neighborhoods plunged into chaos. Fully engulfed. Yeah, no, no. Car fires, looting, and violence erupted only hours after a man killed while in police custody was laid to rest. Nobody can tell anybody that something did not go wrong when that guy was locked up. Frank House watched in disbelief as residents literally picked apart parts of Charm City. He understands the frustration, but says this is not the solution. I would say that this doesn't work. This doesn't work. I understand why, but this doesn't work. It's just trash. No bottle. For more than an hour, we watched as dozens of people smashed their way into this Save-A-Lot grocery store and ran out with as much as they could carry. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, Jake. Oh, 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 oh. After that, looters kicked their way into the front door of a nearby Rite Aid and ran out with armloads of merchandise. And then there was this. 30 minutes and I looters swiped and slammed open cash drawers from the pharmacy. Some ran off with coins, others with handfuls of cash. Looting took on an added and twisted dimension at the CVS in Northwest Baltimore, where authorities say after items were stolen, the business was set ablaze. So while there remains uh, some fear and some anger, certainly here in Baltimore, some of it directed at us, as you can see in the video, various items thrown at our vehicles, and we were threatened on a number of occasions. I have to say, we've also had a number of people come up to us and say, this is not the Baltimore that we care about. We need to come together and to fix what is happening. Live in Baltimore, Jay Corf, News Channel 8.